All right, so hello everyone, this is me again, Vincent. Welcome to the next Godzilla-thon, the 11th one already. Like, holy crap. No, wait. Yeah, the, no. The 10th, I'm sorry. <laughs> I meant to say the 10th one. Um, I, I didn't mean 11. I, I keep counting wrong. That's the one problem with the, not really a problem. It's just hard to keep track of the numbers of these movies, at least, um, in the series. But if you hear that the room is echoey or whatever is recording, it's because I'm in the bathroom once again. So I'm stuck here again, and we might as well get to the point. I said it in the last video. Um, the the movie today is very kid friendly, and this is where the series like really changed direction. It became what everyone knows the Godzilla franchise is. It's goofy, cheesy. It's for kids. This is really the movie. I said it in the, all the other reviews that they were getting sillier and sillier, but some of them were pretty good, like Destroy All Monsters and Godzilla vs. Mothra and Son of Godzilla. But there was movies like this, which is Godzilla's Revenge or All Monsters Attack um, is the other title. So let's just get to the plot. This movie, there's not going to be a lot to talk about because you're going to find out in in the rest of the video so um but again by the way i don't i keep i don't like actually doing the dvd things because i think you guys are probably bored of it but i just wanted to show on the back of my old one again these images of godzilla like where did they come from there's this image that looks like the 67 son of godzilla mixed with the 66 um versus sea monster suit like please somebody tell me like where do the where do where does these people where do these people who are these people <laughs> um where do these people get these images from I really want to know cuz I cannot find them if somebody finds them or something I don't know what I'll do <laughs> they'll be like the king of like ki um the kaiju cronies um fan group or whatever but I don't know but um let's get to the plot it's very simple um, little boy Ichiro, or is it me, or when I, I was younger and still now, does it, the dubbing sound like they make him say Gerald? Because that's what I always thought his name was. Is tired of being beaten up by the local bully Gabra. Yeah, that's another mistake. The bully's name is Gabra. You'll understand later. Um, and imagines what Godzilla's son, Mingya, would do in the same situation. So the whole movie with the monster stuff, apparently destroy monsters is ignored and everything else. Basically, the movie, with the monster parts with Godzilla, um, Mingya, and, and the other stuff, it's all a dream, so it's not real in this movie. So um, so he imagines traveling to Monster Island, where he befriend, befriended by Mingya in person. Now, how do you how do you befriend Mingya? Is it like he's giant, like in Son of Godzilla, you may be asking? No, he shrinks down to human size, and... In the Japanese, let's just get this real quick. In the Japanese version, he sounds like a little kid, which is kind of strange. But in the American version, the one I always grew up with, he has his voice that's super funny. Like, he, he talks like this. Like, hey, come over here. <laughs> like, like that. Like, he sounds like something like Fred Flintstone or, or like or like Yogi Bear or something. He's like, Godzilla says I should learn to fight my own battles, you know. Like, something like that. <laughs> it kind of fits, but it's funny at the same time. Um, but yeah, he could do those two things for some reason, but the suit actually, just to really quickly iterate, it looks a little goofier than the one from, uh, Destroy All Monsters and Son of Godzilla, but it, you kind of see like a little bit of wear and tear in it, but it's still okay for what it is. Um, they quickly become pals after finding out that both have battle, battled their own bullies. Only problem is Ming is bullies are the giant inhabitants of Monster Island, which the new monster in the movie, the only new monster, is Gabra. And I don't know what the heck he's supposed to be. Like, people say he's like an ogre or an orc or some crap like that. I, I, he looks more like a cat mixed with like some kind of fantasy creature, like a troll or something. And he has this ability to give you um, a, a defibrillator through his hands. Basically, he's able to... In, um have electricity and shock it through his hands almost kind of like something like like the shocker from spider-man or something um and godzilla wants him to get tough um ichiro learns about himself and how to deal with his own neighborhood 
um, nasties. Now, a lot of people would say that this is the... I'm going to put the the microphone down for a second. It's probably going to get like super echoey right now. But a lot of people say that this movie is the worst Godzilla movie ever. And I'm going to get into the details before you guys hear my um, honest opinion. Is that um, people see because it's kiddie friendly. I think it teaches... A, less, a good lesson for kids is to stand up to bullies and to be brave and things. And Godzilla, and just like in the movie, Godzilla is this kid's hero. He looks up to him. And that's a good thing for kids. When I was a kid, I always looked up to Godzilla besides my parents. Like, he was awesome. He fought monsters. He never gave up. He always kept coming back. And, well, he's awesome, for lack of better words. But, um... People criticize it for that, and also the fact that this movie uses heavy stock footage from Son of Godzilla and Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster, like, a lot of it. But they edited some parts of it down, and you could tell even, too, like, with the different Godzilla suits in the different scenes, and the different foreground and background shots they do to edit to make it look like it was part of the full movie. But it's just the whole thing, and I'm not, there is a lot of monster action in this one, but a lot of it is just about the kid. And besides the bullies, there's these two burglar guys who robbed, robbed a car, and they remind me, the whole ending of the movie and these two nuts remind me of the burglars in Home Alone 2, specifically, because they're in a building, and they're running around, getting booby-trapped and stuff, and whatnot. It's, like, super silly, but it's it's... I think it's funny. It's silly. It's like Home Alone, but it's Japanese. <laughs> Godzilla. But, um, I also want to say, like, the the monster stuff, it's pretty amusing. Like, the new monster, he's, he's stupid and weird, as I said earlier. Like, he's kind of a WTF monster. But it's cool seeing Minga getting beat up. And by the way, this is the last movie Minga's going to appear in until, like, a few decades later. Or you want to say, yeah, decades later. But, um... Yeah, it also uses stock footage and destroy our monsters with parts of the movie, and even King Kong escapes at some points with a lot of the monsters being shown here and there and whatnot. But this, I saw these footage first in this movie. It was before I even found out that it was stock footage, and then I saw Son of Godzilla and Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster, and I was like, wait a minute, these scenes seem familiar. Oh, they're from this movie. And then I learned on, at, um, during the internet that it was the reverse way. I learned it because um, it was the other way around. Those scenes were from those movies and they were in this one. And the kid, there's not much interesting else with the characters or the monsters. It, the Godzilla, it's the same Godzilla suit. He's still awesome as always. I don't need to talk about the Godzilla suit anymore because it's going to appear in the next two movies anyways. But I'll talk about it later on as it deteriorates. Yeah, it's going to deteriorate. Uh, the same thing with the Minga suit. And the Gabra, I said it's pretty silly. But all the stuff with the monsters, like seeing God, same tropes, like Godzilla teaching Minga how to shoot his fire breath. And the monster fighting is pretty crazy. And the ending, it's actually really amusing. Like Minga fighting Gabra and flipping around all over the place and stuff happening. And then Gabra fights Godzilla and Godzilla gets mad and like basically WWE wrestles him. And beats him to crap, basically, and it's pretty amusing. And this movie does get a um, does get a lot of laughs out of me. Like I laugh really hard at certain things, like when Gabra's like flying through the air, like what the crap was <laughs> that? But um, yeah, like there's not a whole mu lot to talk about because it's a simple movie. Because they use the I could excuse that the it's like going from Destroyer Monsters like. This is the last Godzilla movie. It's the big hurrah, the big finale. And then they come out with this super kid-friendly movie about Godzilla. And it's kind of thinking almost like... It's like they did use all of their budget on the last movie. But they only had a little bit to do a few sets. Um, two new suits and reuse the Godzilla suit again. And to shoot just new scenes. So I kind of excuse that idea at least. But... Yeah, the kid I want to talk about, I actually want to talk about two characters. Is the kid, um, Ichiro or Gerald, as I used to call him when I was, like, younger. 
By the way, I used to watch this movie all the time, so that might help you with the hint of how I feel about this movie. But um, he has like the yellow hat. All all the kids have like these super short shorts on, which is super, which is funny all the time. Like these kids in these Japanese movies with their short shorts, like they eat their butt cheeks basically. I don't want to get weird with it, but it's like weird. It is weird. Um, he's like your everyday kid, like you could relate to him or something like that, getting bullied and his mom and dad work all the time, whatever, and he faces these bad guys like Home Alone again and the bullies and beats them up and befriends them. And then there's this character, um, the old man, he's like a toy inventor, like his next door neighbor who's like his babysitter and friend basically. I like this guy, like he's one of my favorite characters in the movie, like uh, now that I saw it, I'm like, like th he's a super, he's an old man first off, and he's super nice, and he makes toys, for crying out loud, like this dude, dude's amazing, like I would like to be this guy's friend, pretty much, like I think he's the best character besides, well he's the best character, <laughs> and he, he's not even really important mostly, he's just there to be a babysitter or whatever, or just an authority figure to be there. But overall, the monster stuff is pretty cool. The kid stuff is... You could skip that, I guess, if you're one of those people. But you want to know my thoughts? I think it's pretty good. Again, I, I'm trying to defend it. I see this as the most underrated besides the next movie, um, Godzilla movie. Just because it's a four kids, it has stock footage. And if you could excuse that and think of the mindset, like, they used up everything in their last movie... They wanted to do something different, and you could just see the new monster scenes. Like, you could just take out the stock footage stuff, and you, you could just set your mindset. It, it's not like Halloween 3, where that movie was, like, bad altogether because it didn't have everything from the other movies. It's not like this movie was just called Godzilla's Revenge. They called it Revenge because Godzilla's coming back. That's the only reason they called it that. But it's kind of like calling this movie by its title but having no Godzilla in it. Like, imagine that. You could say that about the 2014 movie, but Godzilla was in it. Imagine there was absolutely no Godzilla. Like, you're like, where's Godzilla? I see, like, buildings getting destroyed and a monster. Where's Godzilla? Where's the atomic threat? Like, imagine that kind of movie. That movie would suck. This movie, I don't think, sucks. It's good for kids. It's not for everybody. If you have a goofy, weird, cheesy taste like I do, if you like like the old stuff like Batman, the 60s Batman, all those older shows like this, and campy stuff, I recommend it. But if you guys are one of those and you don't like this kind of stuff, I would say skip it. The movies that I say skip definitely are Sea Monster and Raids Again. Those movies, Raids Again is the worst movie I consider. And Sea Monster is kind of dull a little bit for what it was. It's not amazing. It's not amazing. It's not bad. It's just okay. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, it's probably not as long I, as I said. It probably is. But I just wanted to throw all that out there for this review. So, yep. So for the next few movies, we're going on this theme with kid-friendly stuff. But I think the next movie is going to... Kind of break that a little bit. We're going back to the scary horror stuff actually this time and we're going into the psychedelic crazy stuff. So hope you guys enjoy the kind of share, subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down, watch your videos and hope to see y'all next time and I'll see you in the next Godzilla Thong.